Okay, I'll start my presentation. Uh, this is going to be pretty easy to my pants because uh, that's how I do things. So this is uh, CopyScript, monocles and top hats for everyone. Uh, I've been using CopyScript for about a week now and I don't want to ever write JavaScript again. So, pretty cool. Uh, my Twitter handle is Joel Metter, or for expected behavior. My name's Joel Metter as well as my Twitter handle, so it's not like a weird play on words or anything. Um, this is a GitHub already, it's that third thing. Um, I'm going to be using a gem that works in Rails 2 and Rails 3 called Barista, which makes using CopyScript delicious. And the main CopyScript site, which will do a far better job than I will of explaining all this stuff, but possibly won't be as real world, is there at the bottom. You can also go to copyscript.org, I think, and it redirects. So let's get rolling. Oh man, tiny screen. Uh, okay, so so this is a stupid web app that I made for this presentation. Uh, it's the classic Rails. I have a blog, except I'm lazy, so it only has posts. It doesn't even have an author model. Uh, so anyway, you can make posts and stuff. And uh, let me show you something. Um, this is not about CopyScript, this is more about Ruby and Rails. Uh, these are the gems that I had to install. Um, this is Ruby 1.9 Rails 3. Uh, what I've got going on here is Hamel Compass and some of the cool stuff that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, web app theme, which is a thing to like basically bootstrap a website so it doesn't look terrible. Um, you can just install a theme. Um, Hamel Rails is a thing you, you need for Rails 3, I guess. Um, Rails 3 Generators does some cool stuff. I've got Factory Girl because I hate fixtures. And this thing you don't have to care about because it's specific to my common files. Or my... Yeah, anyway. Um, so what I want to show you is a copy script. And this looks decidedly alike to JavaScript. Um, and this is... This is how I include it. Because I'm using Barista, there is a uh, there's an initializer somewhere. And what will happen is Barista will handle the request for that JavaScript file, which is in is going to wind up in public JavaScripts. But uh, it will it will look in the app copy scripts directory, um, and it will compile this into job into JavaScript. So CopyScript does some special stuff. And this is what actually comes out of that. So, this is what you get from CopyScript. Um, it's about, about the same thing. Um, so one cool thing you can do is... Let me do that. So, that doesn't look different at all. Let me show you this one. So one thing that's nice, one of the reasons to use CopyScript is because JavaScript is really syntax heavy, in my opinion. Uh, so you'll notice in this one I have taken out the, uh, the friends in, in that call. Um, and I'll show you, let me go re-requests. Hey, still working. And it looks the same, same code. So that's cool. Um, so what is recompiling that over? Excuse me? Is something re is recompiling that or? Yeah, Barista handles that. Um, things you'll need to do this are, uh, I think that you need Node.js installed on your system and possibly NPM, which is the Node package manager, and then CopyScript. Uh, you can get all of that via homebrew, I believe, so it's pretty easy to install, it took me like five minutes. <coughs> so I guess my question is, like, so it looks at your alert, hey, and then it, and it compiles that into something else, like another file, or? Yeah, have you used, um, have you used SAS at all? Yeah, a little bit. So, SAS and Barista kind of do the th same thing, like Compass does the same thing that Barista does. It will basically look at your SAS, and when you make a request for 
a file that is at, you know, in my case, I'm using I'm using SAS in this. So when I make a request for app style sheets screen dot SAS, or in this case, my request would be against uh, public style sheets screen dot CSS, then Compass will basically take over for a second, compile my SAS files, and then put that put that CSS file into my public directory and then serve it. So Barista does the same thing for CoffeeScript. I write some stuff, put it in app copy scripts, and then when I make a request for a file that's not there, for example, in public JavaScripts, then Barista will look at the copy script and compile it. And uh, if it doesn't work, then it will shoot out a 500 and your app will explode. So it's pretty in your face, which is good. Thanks. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, so first cool thing is I don't have to write parentheses all the time because I hate parentheses. Um, I decided not to do a super complicated app for this just because I thought it would uh, take too long to explain. But. Apparently, I deleted my file. So what I wanted uh, was when I make a new post, I wanted just some really, really stupid, like when I click save, it does some client side, like marking of things that I should have filled in if they're blank. So, you know, that's dumb. Looks terrible. Not something you do in production probably, but it's there. So this is, uh, this is a little different. This has some jQuery in it. Um, I'll get up and explain what's going on. So this is using this is a jQuery object clearly, and this is uh, this is basically I'm declaring a function with no there's nothing to the left of it. There's no uh, parentheses with uh, parameters. So this is just declaring a function. If, if someone by the door closes a little bit, could just wash it out. So I'm not Okay, so what is happening is I'm saying for the jQuery object, I want to pass it a function, um, and that's just a, an alternative. You've never used it to document ready for jQuery. Um, and so I have a button in my post form, which is supposed to submit, and this is the click hand button. It will, it will look for the form that fits around and then do some crap, and I'm finding the, the empty field. Yeah, I'm marking stuff pink. It's really not very good code, but it was the first thing I thought of, so there you go. And I will show you the JavaScript that comes out of that. So this is pretty standard stuff. I think anyone who's ever written jQuery will, will see that this is, this is pretty close. Um, one thing that maybe is not completely obvious is uh, I can actually remove that, I believe, and it will be the same. So let me re Yeah, so. So another cool thing that wasn't obvious, maybe not obvious, is uh, the last thing, the source kind of like Ruby, the last thing that you, you put into uh, like in a function or whatever is returned, which is really nice. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to return false. Um, I guess, are there any questions about what's going on here? Part of the syntax? No? Okay. Out of curiosity, like what would you say percentage-wise, how many keystrokes does it save you? Um, you have the ballpark. For this one, not a whole lot because this is pretty compact. Um, one thing I've noticed just in a little bit of testing is the code becomes more semantic and readable, so like refactoring is a lot less prone to me screwing up parentheses everywhere. So I've refactored more JavaScript in the last two days than I have in like the previous two months. Just because I was like, wee, copy it around, it's done. <laughs> I didn't screw up any parentheses this time. Okay. Is there a way to 
course uh, race to to run that through like UA compressor or something like that to through what? Through a symbolizer. Can, can you force the brace to output through UE compressor to give you uh, oh, minification? Yeah, with a tiny JavaScript. I think there is. Let me. The JavaScript it outputs is link compatible, so it should be very easy to compact. Uh, I did read something about it, but you can you can hook into into all that stuff pretty easily. Okay. So it should be possible. I have not tried that though. Okay. Um, so this is pretty good. Like I'm I'm turning everything pink, and that that looks great. But uh, what if what if all of my stuff isn't required, or maybe I want to. I want to highlight this more, so I went back to the drawing board. I was like, "Well, let's see, let's see how far I can push this into generic, generic build." So my first one was O3 click refactor. Let me open up my JavaScript thing real fast. Uh, so I have introduced the idea of the pinkify function, which is a good one and wanted to give me the empty text siblings for a thing. Uh, and since they're not actually siblings, the form is... Form is this, so they're not actually siblings, they're all in kind of semantic, yada yada yada. So I can't actually use siblings. So, this is kind of a false name, but anyway. Um, <coughs> So I think anyone who's written Ruby will tell you this probably looks a lot more like Ruby than it does JavaScript. I don't know. Um, like, this is a very Ruby thing to do. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is this is uh, this is going to return return false, which will stop my book handler. Which probably um, anyway, I've got I want to find all my stuff. I want to pickify them when I'm done, and I want to book them. I think. You could do this in JavaScript, but like refactoring in this way is kind of a pain in the ass because you end up typing a lot, and I hate typing, so I think this is a lot better. Um, let's see. You can see here. This is actually the syntax for parameters for a function. So what I'm doing is is here. You know, I'm defining that stuff. So in elements, I've got entities. And, and that's pretty awesome, I think. Uh, any questions about that one before I show you JavaScript? And I'll show you that it still works. Yep. Can we see the, the compiled version of that? Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. So you can see one thing that's happening is uh, CopyScript will basically de will declare variables at the tops of things, so that's cool. Um, and I think that's a thing that JSLint does, or requires. wants you to do. Requires. Okay. So it's looking pretty good now. This is definitely like code that I wouldn't want to write because of all of the syntax that I have to write to do it. But if I don't have to write syntax, then it's awesome. It's really easy. Um, anyone have any suggestions for things I might do to this? I noticed that it was uh, localizing your variables with the var keyword. Is there a way to break out of that that you know of? You don't want to? <coughs> I'm just curious. Like force global? I wouldn't want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you could be like. You can put literals. JavaScript window. Oh, that's right. Yes, you can. Let me open up a real one. <coughs> so this is a. Yes. Uh, this is one that's a, a literal, just because. Uh, I 
was not thinking very clearly when I was translating this, so I didn't feel like translating it. Oh, the back ticks, I gotcha. Back ticks do do the stuff. Um, Got passed directly, as you can see. It's the same function. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, look at at the form itself. Um, so this is, I think, the next one. Nope, I'm wrong. Nope. Um, so one thing I want to do is basically throw stars down on top of uh, on top of my uh, labels when I do this thing. So I introduced the starify method. Uses some uh, some pretty cool stuff. Um, so the the new entry here, I think you'll see, is the unless keyword, which you might know from Ruby. Uh, pretty sweet. Nice. Uh, it's basically the opposite of if. And uh, does JavaScript uh, allow something like in Ruby where you put the unless after the statement? It does. I think my next example has that. Um, another thing you'll see is interpolation, string interpolation, like Ruby has, which I can't tell you how happy it makes me to not have to type plus, and the correct, like, quote mark. Really happy is the answer. <laughs> um, so those are pretty cool features, and really I think it's worth using just for string interpolation, but you may have different opinions on it. Um, Parentheses at, at the end of the functions, like label that is general, are those parentheses instead of yes? I think so. But yeah. Otherwise, you're saying label text equals to the function, like you can't in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Screw. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> It doesn't do magical like meta programming lookup stuff to tell if it's a function or not yet. <laughs> uh, probably will never do that because of the performance problems. But uh, anyway, you can see now that I'm starring my my labels, which is cool. Um, the thing that I did last was I don't know that I I don't know if I left this one in or not. So this may. You know, you're ready to go. Uh, you can see my JavaScript file names got more and more ridiculous as time went on. Uh, yeah. Okay, here's an example of the at the end of the line if, which is really nice. Um, so what I wanted to do in this one is uh, is basically pass in a selector and only mark things that are required and this actually has a little bit of Ruby behind it which I'll show you so I can like pull this into the NDRB meeting instead of just being let's do JavaScript time um, but uh, again this is this is another good feature um, you'll see here that I'm doing uh, default values which is nice oh, yeah. not a thing JavaScript does um, you also get you can also do things like foo or equal bar, which I think has another syntax or equal bar, which I don't know why you'd ever do that, but whatever. It's there. Um, cool, so I changed, I changed a little bit. Uh, I wanted to make this work for any form on my site that I had marked as verifiable. Um, and I don't actually remember the state of this thing, so I don't think it will go real fast. Yeah. yeah, okay. 
So I just marked my my submit button as verifiable, which means it's going to verify using JavaScript the thing. Um, right now, I suspect what's going to happen is nothing's going to get marked. Yeah, I might have an error. No, I don't know. <coughs> Let me get stash apply. Uh, is there like a get stash show? That's the one. <coughs> okay. Um, sorry about this, guys. So you can get stash show in the name of it and I'll like list that. I think it's. Did you not mark any of the fields like on the post that you required? Well, yeah, that's what's happening. I'm going to say if you do the stash at, and then curly brace zero, curly brace. Yeah. That? Yeah. But I think if you do get you stash show. list, and then of that. Show, and literally. Get stash show, and then stash at. Copy, copy the, uh, the the first eight characters of the stash at line, or you did the get stash, stash list thing. Show. <laughs> you mean stash show? Yeah. And I copied this thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dash p after this show. <laughs> Sorry. That's a hand. That's a handy. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Hey. <laughs> Boy. It took too long to figure that out at some point. Okay, <laughs> fun times. Uh, so I'm putting on, I'm putting this on post helper just. No, oh, great. All right. I'm putting this on uh, post helper for fun. Uh, really, I would want it on application helper. Probably would want to pass in. Curse you, tiny text. So this is like looks like the perfect syntax. At what point does this just become native in the browser? Uh, there's there's some kind of thing that you can do um, now that is uh, it's like script type equal uh, text coffee script. I don't know how it works. I think there's like a, Java, or a JavaScript compiler for CoffeeScript that if you do that, it will compile the CoffeeScript live. Right. And uses so, Node.js to do it in the first place anyway. So, yeah. You could do that if you were like really feeling crazy. And you're like, CoffeeScript is going to come to Mozilla 5. I'm sure of it. And then I can remove this thing. Um, anyway, so putting this on post helper. Um, this is kind of some cool stuff that you can do in Rails 3. Um, you can call validators on and then give it an attribute name. And you get back um, an array of validations on that particular thing. So in this case, I only care about presence validators for this very stupid, stupid example that I've written. And I'm going to steal this line. Just throw that down. I would probably like refactor this some, but uh, this is a demo, so hold on to your hats. This may not work. So what I should see, uh, I probably never showed you guys the model. What I should see is required on title and body um, from those. And the screen is tiny, so it's not actually working. Okay, it didn't work the way that I wanted it to. That's okay. <clears throat> Pretend that this worked, and that is the thing that should have happened. Is this shouldn't have been required. Uh, yeah, I've got a great plan. I'm going to edit this live.
and then I'll press the button. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> nice. Go back to your go back to your uh Yeah, it's because you gave it sent. Oh yeah. That'll that'll cause problems, won't it? <laughs> Yeah, look at that magic. Okay, so how did this work? Let's go back to click refactor take two alpha three. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing, I think, I think that if you use this, you'll be happier than if you're writing JavaScript, because a lot of the stuff you can do in JavaScript is just kind of wordy and painful. Like doing default, doing default params is like. Oh god damn it. Again, I gotta type this thing. Sorry for my language. Uh, but uh, you know, this is this is really nice. Like I'm just like, yes, I want to redefine this thing if it is if it is actually defined. So I don't know. I think it's really cool, I think you should use it. Uh, any questions? If not, I'm done. Hey, can I use your computer? Any questions about copy scripts? <laughs> what, is, what is the background of what is the background of copy script? Why this guy did it, or why what his background is in terms of languages? What? Uh, I think it's a dude who writes Ruby and he hates JavaScript. <laughs> he he actually read uh, Mark Andre Corignor. Yes, his book. Uh, Write your, own like write your own language, yeah. something like that. Build your own programming language, I think. And that was the language he decided to write. God bless him. <laughs> he, awesome. he wanted to keep it close to JavaScript in, like, semantics, with the parentheses and stuff, but make as much of it optional as possible. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job. I didn't cover all the things. There's, like, some auto-binding function stuff where you can bind this automatically, which has some really kind of cool code. Um, I will say that if you don't know how to write JavaScript, CopyScript might not be the first thing that you should tackle. Yeah. Uh, because it's definitely like JavaScript for JavaScript people, or JavaScript for people who hate JavaScript but know it. <laughs> uh, if you don't know how JavaScript closures work, like you're probably going to get screwed and not understand why. Uh, so it's pretty cool, but it's definitely, it's not not for JavaScript beginners. Intermediates, definitely. Sometimes it'll get confused with indentation or something, and so you have to go back into the JavaScript to actually see what it what it spit out, you know, to make sure that it's I, right. I did right. run into that problem. It is white space sensitive for its nesting. Yeah. Can you replace our JS file with um, no, maybe? I don't know. Can you replace RJS with CopyScript? Oh, RJS has a bunch of Ruby. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> you could probably um, use the same stuff that Barista uses to compile the CopyScript and write blocks of CopyScript in there and then compile them in place. And it would be like inlining JavaScript, which sounds like it might be awful, but I don't know. <laughs> One thing that I thought was really cool that I've totally been not done is showing you the way to do JSON, um, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. You just do this, and then you're all like... <laughs> and then you just hit return, you don't even need a comma. Yeah. Look, I'm done. Like for even for more properties, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You can see. I don't know. Can you see that? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Good it job, is. Baldwin. It is. It's <laughs> JSON. Trust me. Uh, anyone know if there's a button to make Firebug bigger? Pretty sure not. Alright. Nope. 
You guys try, do that for the You could look there. at the compiled. Yeah, that's right. I've got a great plan. Just, just for the yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no pixelation. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, we're done with that part. <laughs> Any other questions? Are there any obvious points where you want to fall back to JavaScript? Like the points that handle where you, you decide to use Erb again? Is there anything like that? Um, there's some stuff like where I couldn't figure out how to define the thing that I wanted. Or it was uh, like that thing that I showed from from Big Blue Wagon that had some some special syntax that I didn't know how to reproduce in CopyScript, and that just might be that I'm ignorant of how to do it. But there are probably places where you're doing uh, doing some redefines and doing stuff on on like document things like that where you might want to just use pure JavaScript. And you can just inline it, so it's cool. JavaScript is valid copy script, I think. Yeah, by inline you mean, mm -hmm. I mean, just use JavaScript, you don't need like a, something signifying that you're doing. Right, you just, you just write the JavaScript instead of something else. Um, yeah. Cool, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>